pity you <clears throat> Can't clear the gas. Nothing's working. We can't get the ventilation system working, Batman. The room is still full of that maniac's gas. The beast was too strong. His animal savagery nearly cost me my life. I took my frustrations out on a lone patient. His case notes suggested he was a paranoid schizophrenic. His pleas as I beat him to death suggested much more. His confessions what illuminating. My path was clear. Every day, I found the patients more distracting. Their insane mutterings and constant twitching disgusted me. There was only one way to cure this evil. Only one way to purify the city and ensure its future. I needed to prepare myself. I needed to be ready. Discussing those years could explain your compulsive behavior. 
Very well. My father hated me. Always called me a moron. I see. I was determined to prove him wrong. So I entered a contest at school. A $20 prize to the kid who could figure out an almost impossible logic problem. I won, of course. And that pleased your father? Hardly. He was convinced I had cheated. He kept yelling, you must have cheated. Admit it, you moron, you cheated. I swore I didn't. And he hit me for lying. I'm sorry to hear that, Edward. Don't be. He was right. Challenge is too great for me. I had a sudden pang of conscience. I sought counsel from my priest on the choices I had made. I asked him if it was a sin to kill in order to save a life. The holy man said all life was sacred, but a judgment would not be upon my soul if I acted to save another. I left the confessional with my soul uplifted, convinced more than ever I am doing a service not only to mankind, but to God as well. I watched in silence as he brought in the woman. Her skin, now a venomous green. The wanton creature no longer looked like a human being, much less a woman. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. Yet he has once again delivered this female atrocity to our care. Once I have dealt with the monster, I think it will be time to see if green wood does, in fact, burn. Interview 44. This is yet another interview with Edward Nigma. I have yet to make up my mind whether he's a genius or just deluded. Whichever one he is, just being in his company is both irritating and exhausting. Hello, Miss Young. You look tired. Anything you need my help with? No, thank you, Edward. I am here to help you. We all are. <laughs> Forgive my arrogance, Doctor, but if you think I need your help, well... You're in the right place. Let's look at it a different way. Throughout your career, you have specialized in bizarre traps and convoluted clues that more often than not result in the death of the unfortunate participants. And if the citizens of Gotham were smarter, my games would be merely an amusing diversion. Instead of death traps. You really should be thanking me. 
weeding out the ignorant, the stupid, the useless. But don't worry, I'm sure you would survive. What a lovely photo on your desk, Doctor. Your family? Mother, perhaps. Put that down. Get out! Go on! Sitting in the darkness outside of his cell, I watched the crazed twitching, listened to the disgusting words that came from his mouth. How can I let a dirty animal like this live? He is the cancer I have sworn to protect the city from. your obsession with Batman. Hardly an obsession, Miss Young. I simply feel an obligation to expose him. You know who he is? More important, I know what he is. What do you mean? It's obvious. The mask, the weapons, the scare tactics. He's a criminal. No different than Joker, Two-Face, or myself. Most people consider him a hero. Most people are idiots. They can't see Batman for the villain he is. Riddle me this! How did he get his car and his gadgets? I don't do With money stolen from the criminals he defeats. Why does Gordon turn a blind eye to his antics? Batman bribes him. The answers are right in front of your stupid talking face. Edward, please, calm down. Wake up, Gotham. <laughs> no sane, law-abiding man does those things. No one's that selfless. Batman is as vile as the cop. Security! Security!
final interview with Edward. I have gone as far as I can. I can no longer tolerate his mood swings and tantrums. I have more important work to be getting on with. He will be transferred to Dr. Whistler's care as of next week. Good morning, Doctor. How are you today? Fine, thank you, Edward. You're in a good mood. I'm always in rare spirits when I'm about to be released. Edward, you know you don't come up for parole for another three years. First thing I'll do is have dinner at that Italian place on 19th Street. Seriously, Edward. I only hope Joker hasn't completely trashed the city. Oh well, I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. Wait, have you been in contact with the Joker? He escaped Arkham weeks ago. And yet, one hears things. What things? What you heard? Oh, something about a surprise party for Batman. I forget the rest. You know Joker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edward, if you know anything, you've got to tell me. Lives could be at stake. What did Joker say? You forget, Doctor. I'm the one who asks the riddles. Curse me for a fool. How could I not see it until now? The monster had a confederate. I hid in the darkness near his cell and saw with my own eyes one of the doctors whispering to him. She looked at him through the transparent barrier with tenderness, with, dare I say, desire. My skin crawled with revulsion as she kissed the glass. Fighting the urge to dash the woman's head through the glass, I let her continue. The damnable clown might have shared secrets with her that would be useful once the mad dog has been executed. I'm sure the woman will reveal what she knows to me. If not willingly, then certainly under electronic persuasion. After that, a lobotomy, I think. Unfortunate for one so young, but her lust has put the reputation of Arkham at stake. Yes, a lobotomy, the very thing. There is no other way to ensure her silence 
in this regrettable matter. Yet again, I found myself watching him. No one can provide a cure. He laughs in the face of those who try. Amadeus would not have let him live, and neither should I. One last sip of cognac, and I was ready. <laughs> Puzzling, isn't it? What? You're nearly done? Are you cheating? Looking them up on the internet? Tell me.
can you defeat a mind such as mine? Patient interview 9. Dr. Crane continues to evade questions. I believe he is quite sane, just evil. He takes no interest in the people he has hurt. His research appears to be the only motivating factor in his life. What is it about fear that drives your obsession? Fear drives everything, Stephen. Everything. Your life is governed by fear. Every decision you make is a product of that fear. Don't be ridiculous. You married your wife. Margaret, isn't it? Because you were scared of dying alone. You have children because you're scared of leaving nothing behind that really matters. You go to the doctors because you're scared of dying. Do I need to go on? No. I think that will be all for today. Guards? He watched as I entered the cell. He smiled as I showed him the knife. I told him how I will use it. How I will cleanse this city. And then... Terror. I was paralyzed. I struggled. I screamed. But I was silent. The monster looked at me. Expressionless. He ran my blade slowly across my forehead. A smile cracked across his horrible porcelain face, and I heard the filth fall from his mouth. He laughed and called me that horrible name. Now! How? How are you still standing? How come it's not affecting you? Who 
says it's not. I know it. What was it like? What have you seen? Officer Cash, get this formula to the air conditioning system now. You failed, Crane. Again. I've been working with Dr. Keller in creating an antidote to the toxins in your cologne. He fooled you, Crane. How does that make you feel? Threatened? Humiliated? Scared? Can you defeat a mind such as mine? was impossible to solve. How did you do it? It must have been Crane, another one who doesn't deserve to live. Why do these people thrive on chaos? Joker, in particular, desired anarchy. And since his escape will no doubt wreak it upon my city, I feel this is the end for my diary. Joker will be recaptured. My story will be told. I am not afraid. If Arkham becomes my cell, then I will know I did my best. I will be remembered. spirit of Amadeus Arkham. Even though Amadeus had long since passed, his spirit lived on, surviving, moving through the walls of his asylum. When it chose me, I felt proud. I was honored to continue his work, to cleanse this city. If you are strong-willed enough to follow my tale, you are strong-minded enough to deduce my identity. Come and find me, friend. Together, we will save Gotham. What? 
You did it? You must have cheated. There is no way you could have beaten me. Well, you asked for it, Batman. My final challenge for the whole of Gotham is just seconds away. What? Sirens. The police. You cheated, Batman. You couldn't have outsmarted me.
My name is Quincy Sharp, the spirit of Amadeus Arkham. You have done well to decipher my story, and I pray it has helped you on your path. I trust that through my writings, you will do what is right. Please, I implore you, continue my work. This city deserves a savior. Continue my work. Thank you. 